Right, hello people and welcome, welcome back actually to JP Boxing. I say welcome back because I've been out the game for a few months man, you haven't seen my face on this channel for quite a long while now, apologies for that, I've been a bit MIA but today as I said I am back, I am back with a boxing talk, pure boxing talk all day every day, that's what you're going to get on this channel now so before I jump into today's topic I'll just ask that if you're a boxing fan like me that loves honest boxing talking pundits no bias no like playing favoritism to certain fighters or certain promoters or anything like that no agendas just real honest talk calling people out on their bullshit when they deserve it praising the people in the boxing world that de that deserve the boxing praise and yeah just a guy that's fully passionate about everything boxing whether it's good or bad because it's my life man I love it I love talking about it I love doing it but as I said on this channel right here right now what you're going to get moving forward for the next six to nine months or so is just pure boxing talk all day every day previews predictions for all the big fights, all the small fights, everything, pound for pound rankings, post fight reports, news videos, debate videos, as I said, calling motherfuckers out when they need to be called out, stay tuned for all of that man, so yeah, if you want if you want to get involved with all that, because I'm always interacting with other fans too, then please subscribe to my channel, because I've got a whole fresh new look coming for this channel now, and I think you guys are going to like it, so yeah, that's enough about that. That's a quick intro back to the channel and for what's to come and what you can expect here at JP Boxing. But let's jump in to today's topic now, man, because it's something I'm very excited to talk about. I say today's topic, this video's topic, because later on today, I am going to have my prediction videos for Crawford versus Madrimov and all the fights on the undercard of that brilliant American show. And a lot of news and debate videos coming as well today. So this is just, so yeah, stay tuned and once again subscribe for all of that. I'm gonna plug the subscriptions as much as I can right now, get this channel rolling, get the momentum going. But yeah, a guy who does somehow have momentum in his career once again, which is absolutely crazy to say when you think about it. He's been pro for like over 17 years now in his 48th fight. He has got probably the biggest and best win of his career at the age of 40 after people telling him he should retire fucking like 10 years ago now and every year up until now from then, since then. You all know who I'm talking about. It's this guy right here, Del Boy, Derek Warchazora. Man, I just want to start this video by giving him a big fucking clap and giving his, his chant a go. Oh, Derek Chisora. Oh, Derek Chisora. You heard that bellowing from the fans once again at the O2 Arena. In 2024, <coughs> who would have expected this? If you would have said, let's say, I don't know, 10 year, 12 years ago now, when he was getting battered by David Hay and Vitaly Klitschko and people like that, and people were saying he was done, he was finished then, he was never going to stick around at the top level. I was thinking about this on Saturday night. Can you imagine then, if you would have said, this guy is going to still be headlining shows in 12 years' time, he's going to be a fan favourite, he's going to have a cult-like sort of following and fan base and be one of the biggest names still in British boxing, one of the most loved characters in British boxing, people would have called you crazy. I've been a big Derek Chisora fan since the early days, man. Since before Vitaly Klitschko, since like the first Tyson Fury fight. He's always been one of my favourite fighters. He's just a wild motherfucker that brings it inside and outside the ring all the time. But even me as a huge Derek Chisora fan wouldn't have expected that or believed you if you said that then that this guy at the age of 40 would still be getting big, big wins and headlining like this. So yeah, this is more just of like a sort of Chisora appreciation video as well as a post-fight reaction video. I'm not going to give you a breakdown round for round for this one and like come with like the technical analysis and that. Because let's be honest, there was nothing technical going on. What we got with this fight was exactly what we all expected. Derek Chisora, Joe Joyce, two big, slow, crazy motherfuckers. 
going at each other and punching the shit out of each other, both with wide open defences, both loved to throw bombs, and it was going to be whoever was tougher and whoever wanted it more was going to come out on top. Now, going into it, uh, understandably as well, a lot of people made Joe Joyce a huge favourite in this one, and I think if I was betting my smart money, my life was depending on it, maybe I would have gone with Joe Joyce. But in the days building up to the fire, I just had this sense. I said it to uh, people I talked to about boxing and stuff. I was like, I think Del Boy might actually pull this one out the bag, you know. It's his last fight at the O2 Arena. In my opinion, it should be the last fight of his career. What a way to go out this would be. But I was like, I just got a feeling he's going to... He's going to go in there and give it everything he's got, even more than he usually does. And Joe Joyce, man, he's not even on the slide. He's just fully fucking declined over his last few fights, isn't he, since the Zhang beatings. So I thought maybe it's just the right sort of melting pot all mixed together for Derek Chisora to get a big win here. And man, I was right. From the beginning, he was on Joe Joyce. He was throwing that overhand right. He was throwing the left hook. A lot, which was actually a, an unexpected shot that was landing on Joyce a lot. And maybe Joe Joyce, even though he was getting hit with that right hand over and over again, he knows that's the shot people are going to try and land on him. Why he hasn't found a way to get out of the way of it yet, especially when it's a big slow guy like Derek Chisora throwing it at you. And he still can't avoid it. It's actually crazy. I think if you put someone who weren't even a boxer in there, they'd be able to get out of the way of that big right hand coming at them. But for some reason, Joe Joyce just cannot do it. And I have no idea why. But yeah, anyway, Chisora was throwing that. But he was coming over with the left hook quite a lot as well. And moving his head very well. Looking like a vintage Derek Chisora in there. A Chisora of about six, seven years ago. You know, the one who used to really bop his head. <clears throat> and come underneath your shots. And maybe it's because Joe Joyce is so slow. It made Derek Chisora look like that. And yeah. Joe Joyce had some for, some form of success. He, his work rate was good. He probably, I think he threw more shots than Derek Chisora. But it was all pitter-patter with Joe Joyce. And even more, he used to do that earlier in his career. Even when he was at, uh, at his best. He, you know he's never been like a throw massive bomb sort of guy. He's like a break your dad's slow fudding shots. Flicking them out. But he's just even more tentative and even more flicky with it instead of really putting some power behind it. Maybe the Zhang losses and him getting knocked out now. He don't believe his own hype with his chin. That he's just really more tentative and worried about what's coming back. But whatever it was, man, it just played into Chisora's hands. And Chisora picked him off. As he brought uh, Joyce on, as Chisora's like, he'd step onto the ropes. You know, we've seen it before. He's not elusive on the ropes, Chisora, but he'll step back on, he'll step on, back onto the ropes. And as his opponent's coming in, look to throw a massive bomb. That was perfect for a guy like Joe Joyce, who would just walk in foolishly, not one, even thinking about what's coming back. He was landing bombs like that. He was landing bombs going forward. He dropped Joe Joyce in round nine when it looked like Derek Chisora was out on his feet, almost done, and he comes with a big right hand and drops Joe Joyce, puts him on his ass. And yeah, just every round, he was working harder than Joe Joyce. Like, as I said, Joyce might have flicked out more punches, but the real big bombs, the eye catches stuff, was all coming from Derek Chisora throughout the whole night. Scorecards... I had it 96-93 to Chisora, so six rounds to four, but with the knockdown two. Uh, uh, two judges had it 96-94. I don't see how they got that when there should be a knockdown in there too. <clears throat> Maybe they scored one round even. And the other judge, 97-92. All of them scorecards are fair. I don't know many people who think Joe Joyce won this fight. I know Carl Frampton in commentary said it was kind of close and he had it even and the knockdown separating it. I don't see that. I think Chisora, as I said, landed the much better shots, did the much better work all night. Joe Joyce was a bit of a letdown, <clears throat> but Derek Chisora fully fucking fulfilled any expectations and then sometimes by a fucking hundred. The guy, man, he just deserves so much credit for what he's done throughout his career just an unbelievable warrior. The definition. People talk about throwback fighters all the time nowadays. It's a bit of a cliche. Derek Chisora is a throwback fighter. You put this guy in any era, he would have been one of them guys that would have been suited in the 30s and 40s when they were fighting like every two weeks. He fucking loves it, man. He gets in there. He doesn't care about winning or losing. Lost 13 fights throughout his career. 
35 wins though, people always overlook that. They talk about his losses. They don't talk about the guys that actually got 35 wins. Some at a good level too. David Price, Joe Joyce, Malik Scott when he was 35 and 0. Art of Spielkar. He's got some good wins at uh, like fringe world level, Derek Chisora. And obviously the robberies. Robert Hellenius in that first fight when Hellenius was unbeaten. He deserved the decision then. In the first fight against Dillian White, he really deserved that decision then. Like 90% of people thought he won that fight. The first fight against Joseph Parker, he was unlucky there. So he's been robbed a few times as well. He's not a bum, as people like to say with Derek Chisora. He's never going to be the most technical boxer. He was never going to be unbeaten in his career. But he comes in there for one thing, war. And that's why the fans love him. That's why we've wanted to see him over the years. He gets in there, win or lose. Like he said, he'd rather get knocked the fuck out than lose on points. He's that type of guy. He wants to go out on his shield, give it everything he's got. And that's what he's done throughout his whole career. Now, I think this would have been the perfect time for him to bow out. I know he wants to get to 50 fights. He's 48 and 0. Uh, it's not 48 and 0. Sorry, he's not afraid of Mayweather. He's had 48 fights now. Oh, man, I just think this. At the O2 Arena, in front of your home fans, big win against a British rival. He literally left it all in the ring here. Like, he usually looks fucked to tired anyway, but here, like, it was like he was struggling to lift his arms towards the end of it, but he was still somehow swinging them bombs in from his shoulders, but he looked like he was almost dying at the end of this fight, man. This, like, for a warrior like him, would have been a perfect way to say goodbye. But you know what Del Boy is like, straight away on the mic afterwards, he was like, goodbye London, but next I'm coming for Manchester. And he keeps saying he wants some of that Saudi Arabia money. Who is there out there for him? In Manchester, I don't know what he's going on about there. Maybe he just likes a city. I know he's a Man United fan, so he wants to fight there. But I don't see any big fights that are going to be happening up north anytime soon that he could get on the undercard of. Why would he headline up north when he's a London boy and loved, up London, uh, loved in London? Like, there's not really any heavyweights from up north. I'd like to see him in the Dillian White trilogy would be perfect. Go for the Dillian White trilogy and then someone like Deontay Wilder is Saudi Arabia for your 50th fight. Just go for the old people now, man. Don't be fighting these young and beating guys. Don't try, like, try and get a guy in the rankings because you're never going to get a world title shot again or win a world title, let's be honest. He'll know that himself. There's no disrespect. He's just way below that level now. The likes of White and Wilder would be the perfect last two fights for him. If not, Johnny Fisher, that's a big fight in London. A young prospect coming up. It's a winnable fight still for Derek Chisora at this stage. They was talking about the winner of Fabio Waldi and Fraser Clark's rematch. I think that's a bit too much for him at this stage now. Two young guns like that. They're a much higher level than Johnny Fisher. I'll probably beat him up. He don't need that at this stage, man. So yeah, I'd go Johnny Fisher or Dillian White next and then try and get Deontay Wilder in Saudi Arabia. I know he's talking about Gilles Zhang as well, man. That's a dangerous, dangerous fight. And I think he'd get knocked out in that one. But each to their own. Let's see what he goes and does now. Let's enjoy the last couple fights of his career. Enjoy it while it lasts. Because we will miss Derek Chisora when it's all said and done. But he's the type of guy that will turn up at fucking every boxing event still and still give us pure gold in front of the cameras when he's getting interviewed and stuff like that. So this ain't the last of what we see of Derek Chisora in any way. I believe it should be his last time in the ring. Let me know your thoughts now, people. Are you a Derek Chisora fan or are you one of his haters? I know he has got a lot of haters out there, a lot of people that are sick of seeing him in the ring now and think he should be done. Who do you want to see him fight next if he does fight on in his last two fights? And we'll quickly finish with Joe Joyce. Where does this guy go next, man? Jesus Christ. Like, losing to Derek Chisora at this stage of your career, it's a long road back for him. He's going to have to try and get like the loser of like Wardley versus Clark or someone like that. Maybe a Johnny Fisher or someone like that himself. Try and get a decent like lower level, British level win and then try and work your way back in. But the way he looked in the ring on Saturday night, although Derek Chisora is very good, Joe Joyce was very bad. And I don't think he's ever going to win a world title. Maybe he should look at retiring too. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on all of that, people. And if you like what you see here and like what you hear here, please like and subscribe because there's much more to come now. Thank you.